Why do supersonic and hypersonic planes face such extreme conditions? Imagine flying so fast that the air around you becomes your greatest adversary. That's exactly what happens with supersonic and hypersonic planes. When these machines streak across the skies at mind-blowing speeds, ranging from 760 miles per hour to over 3,800 miles per hour, or up to five times the speed of sound, they face challenges that seem straight out of a sci-fi movie. One of the primary challenges is friction. At these speeds, air, which is usually harmless, becomes an abrasive barrier, generating heat intense enough to melt ordinary metals. Picture the fuselage of an aircraft reaching temperatures of over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty hot, isn't it? Then there's aerodynamic pressure. At the tips of the wings along the fuselage or anywhere the plane battles the wind, this pressure acts like an invisible giant trying to bend the aircraft's structure. Add to that the fact that at extreme altitudes, the air becomes thinner, yet still provides resistance. It's like running in quicksand, but at an altitude of over 82,000 feet. Commercial airplanes typically operate at altitudes between 33,000 and 39,000 feet. This range is chosen to optimize fuel efficiency and ensure a smoother flight, as the temperature and air density are more stable at these heights. All of this is carefully calculated because the extreme heat on the aircraft's surface contrasts sharply with the freezing temperatures outside. This thermal shock causes materials to expand and contract constantly. On top of that, radiation and high energy particles at these altitudes can damage electronic systems and even degrade the most resilient materials. Ultimately, high-speed flight is a dangerous dance between cutting-edge engineering and the brutal forces of nature. Every piece, every coating, every curve of the plane is meticulously designed to survive this hostile environment, turning the impossible into reality. That's why supersonic and hypersonic planes are true technological marvels. Now that we understand why these planes face such extreme conditions, let's dive deeper into each of the challenges they encounter. The heat generated by friction, the crushing aerodynamic pressure, and how these planes handle hostile environments at extreme altitudes. Let's start with friction. Friction is a force that occurs whenever two surfaces come into contact and there's movement or an attempted movement between them. It acts in the opposite direction of the motion, resisting sliding, and is present in virtually all physical interactions in our daily lives. As the plane flies at high speeds, the air around it becomes an invisible wall, exerting the resistance force we mentioned earlier. With every moment, this friction compresses air molecules against the aircraft's surface, generating temperatures that exceed 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to melt ordinary metals. The impact is even more severe on parts of the aircraft that face the wind head on, such as the nose and wing edges. These areas endure immense pressure and accumulate extreme heat, to withstand this, they require special materials and designs capable of dissipating heat or resisting the incredibly high temperatures. This is just the first obstacle these incredible machines must overcome. But heat, as impressive as it is, is only the beginning. The second obstacle is aerodynamic pressure. This is one of the most brutal challenges a supersonic or hypersonic plane must face. At high speeds, the air doesn't just flow around the aircraft, it literally becomes a crushing wall of force against its fuselage. Imagine a car speeding through a powerful windstorm, but multiplied thousands of times. In the supersonic regime, this pressure reaches such extreme levels that, without the right design and materials, the fuselage could bend or even collapse. The most affected areas are the edges of the wings, the nose, and any point where airflow accumulates. That's why these aircraft feature incredibly aerodynamic shapes designed to cut through the air with as little resistance as possible. But it's not just about the shape. The fuselage is built with layers of reinforced materials that distribute pressure across the structure, preventing any single part from bearing the full force. Additionally, engineers design these planes to be lightweight yet extraordinarily strong, achieving an almost impossible balance between strength and efficiency. As if that weren't enough, these planes must also handle rapid pressure changes as they climb or descend. The fuselage needs to adapt to these variations without losing stability. Every detail is meticulously planned to withstand forces that defy logic, 
And perhaps the most remarkable part is that, while enduring all this, these machines maintain unbelievable performance and speed. The third obstacle is the hostile environment. This is a scenario where a plane is flying so high that it's practically on the edge of space. At such extreme altitudes, the air is so thin it feels like the plane is navigating through a vacuum. Yet even in this environment, the challenges don't disappear. They just take on a different form. In the supersonic and hypersonic realm, external temperatures can plummet far below freezing. Meanwhile, the aircraft's interior must remain functional and safe, while the exterior battles intense heat generated by friction with the rarefied air. On top of this, exposure to cosmic radiation dramatically increases at these altitudes. Shielding against high-energy particles becomes crucial to protect electronic systems, and, in some cases, the pilots. As if that weren't enough, there's always the risk of encountering space dust or tiny meteoroids. Even microscopic objects can turn into dangerous projectiles at such high speeds, posing a serious threat to the aircraft's structure. Navigating these conditions requires a seamless fusion of cutting-edge engineering, robust materials, and advanced systems, pushing the boundaries of what's possible in aviation. And there's more. The low air density means that the plane's control surfaces, like wings and flaps, must be even more precise and durable as there's less aerodynamic support to stabilize the aircraft. In other words, it's like trying to balance on a tightrope while facing unpredictable, invisible winds. Despite these challenges, these planes not only manage to operate in such extreme conditions, but also achieve speeds and altitudes that seem unimaginable. It's a level of engineering that truly redefines the limits of what's possible. When discussing supersonic and hypersonic planes, it's impossible not to mention the legendary SR-71 Blackbird. Can you believe it was designed back in the 1960s? This aircraft remains one of the greatest examples of engineering, triumphing over extreme challenges. Capable of flying at speeds exceeding 2,300 miles per hour and reaching altitudes above 82,000 feet, the SR-71 was designed for reconnaissance missions gathering intelligence in enemy territories before any defense systems could react. The Blackbird endured such intense temperatures that its fuselage was constructed almost entirely of titanium, one of the few materials capable of withstanding the heat generated during its operations. Even its fuel had a special formulation to prevent spontaneous combustion under the extreme temperatures the plane encountered. Despite its age, the SR-71 is still considered a milestone in aviation history and many of the technologies tested on it serve as the foundation for modern aerospace projects. If the SR-71 is a shining icon of success, modern prototypes show how we continue to push boundaries. Take, for example, the Boeing X-51 Waverider, a hypersonic prototype designed to reach speeds over 3,800 miles per hour at sea level using state-of-the-art scramjet engines. Despite its promise, the X-51 faced significant challenges such as the need to cool its engines while operating in temperatures capable of melting even advanced alloys. Another fascinating example is the development of hypersonic aircraft by China and the United States, such as the DFZF and the Enigmatic Aurora project, respectively. The Chinese DFZF is reported to reach speeds between 3,800 and 7,600 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the American Aurora project remains shrouded in mystery with no concrete evidence or official confirmation of its existence or specifications. This veil of secrecy fuels speculation, but the sheer ambition of these programs highlights the race to master hypersonic flight. As time goes on, new advancements and technologies allow us to surpass previous milestones. Engineers and scientists are continually working to solve challenges like maintaining stability at extreme speeds and controlling the thermal expansion of materials. These efforts show that the quest for speed isn't just a technological race, it's also a battle against the forces of nature. Each breakthrough brings us closer to understanding and mastering the limits of high-speed flight, turning what once seemed impossible into reality. While supersonic and hypersonic planes are awe-inspiring from a technological perspective, their viability in commercial transportation comes with challenges as monumental as the speeds they achieve. Companies like Boom Supersonic are at the forefront of efforts to bring these advancements into everyday aviation, 
But the journey is far from simple. One of the main obstacles lies in economic viability. Flying at supersonic speeds requires significantly more fuel than conventional commercial flights, driving operational costs much higher. For passengers, this means that tickets for a supersonic flight remain out of reach for most people. To put this into perspective, during the Concorde's operation, the most iconic supersonic commercial plane in history, tickets cost thousands of dollars per leg. Making these flights more affordable will require innovations in more efficient fuels and technologies to lower maintenance costs. Additionally, there are the environmental challenges. Supersonic planes consume large amounts of fuel, resulting in significantly higher carbon dioxide emissions per passenger. Operating at extreme speeds often requires flying at higher altitudes, where emissions can have a potentially greater impact on the ozone layer and the atmosphere. Another critical issue is the sonic boom, the loud noise produced when an aircraft breaks the sound barrier. This not only restricts supersonic flight routes over populated areas, but also raises concerns about its impact on ecosystems and human well-being. Addressing these challenges is essential to make supersonic travel a sustainable and practical option for the future. On the other hand, companies like Boom Supersonic are working to address these challenges. Their project, the Overture, promises to be a more efficient and sustainable supersonic aircraft. Boom Supersonic claims that the Overture will be powered by 100% sustainable aviation fuels, SAFs, which could significantly reduce carbon emissions. Additionally, the company is investing in advanced designs and materials to reduce fuel consumption and optimize aerodynamics. The Overture is also designed to mitigate the impact of the sonic boom. Using new technologies, Boom plans to make this sound less intrusive, potentially enabling flights over populated areas without the current restrictions. While these advancements are promising, they still depend on international regulations and extensive large-scale testing to become a reality. If successful, the Overture could redefine the future of commercial supersonic travel. But Boom Supersonic isn't alone in this race. Other companies and nations are also investing heavily in the future of supersonic aviation. NASA, for instance, is developing the X-59, a project aimed at creating a quiet supersonic aircraft to revolutionize commercial transportation. Meanwhile, Airbus and other manufacturers are exploring concepts that combine speed and efficiency, aiming to usher in a new era of aviation. If these initiatives succeed, the way we travel could be completely transformed. Imagine crossing the Atlantic in just three hours or flying from Sao Paulo to Tokyo in half the current time. However, achieving this will require balancing cost, environmental impact, and technical performance. These efforts aren't just a race for innovation. They're an attempt to redefine the future of global mobility, making high-speed travel more accessible and sustainable. As we delve into the world of supersonic and hypersonic planes, it becomes clear that these machines are not just feats of engineering, but powerful symbols of our ability to push boundaries. What began as a dream to fly faster than sound has evolved into a reality shaping the future of aviation. In the military domain, these aircraft are redefining defense and attack strategies, offering speeds and capabilities that make predicting or responding to their movements nearly impossible. They are at the forefront of reconnaissance missions, rapid transport, and even the delivery of equipment in record time completely changing the game for the armed forces of various nations. In commercial aviation, the possibilities are just as fascinating. Imagine crossing continents in mere hours, shortening distances, and transforming the way we connect. Companies are investing heavily to bring these technologies into everyday use, developing aircraft that promise speed, efficiency, and even sustainability. At the same time, these advancements come with challenges. Costs, environmental impact, and technological complexity remain significant hurdles to overcome. However, the history of aviation teaches us that with time and innovation, these challenges can turn into opportunities. What we're witnessing now is only the beginning. Planes that break barriers, endure extreme conditions, and operate at the edge of physical limits are no longer just science fiction. They are our present and, even more so, the future of human mobility. So the big question remains, how far can we go? Because if there's one thing these planes show us, it's that the sky was never the limit.